that you would help us to be open and um, quiet as we listen. All right, number two, heaven is sometimes called paradise. What does paradise actually mean in Greek? Crystal. Um, I don't know. So you don't have any of that? Any of that? <laughs> yeah. All right, fine. Lisa? The garden of God or the upper regions of the heaven. The Greek word for paradise is paradisiosos. <laughs> it means happiness or blessedness. So I uh, used to play in a cumbia club Keep called El Paraiso with the paradise club. So I you can find didn't one. know that I was a musician and I played Mexican cumbia bands and heard, heard the band of El Paraiso. So I've been to paradise. But that has something to do with paradise too. I took it from, it says on page 66, the Greek word for paradise is paradisiosos, which refers, I don't know how they say it, right. which refers to a garden of God or the upper regions of heaven. Huh. All right. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy you don't yeah, that's going to be on the YouTube video. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why I asked you to find it. Because sometimes I mean, there maybe was somewhere else in here that I didn't pick it up on. Okay. Garden of God. All right, um, Tammy, explain and describe the New Jerusalem. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The eternal home for Christians will be New Jerusalem. It is described as measuring 1,500 miles long, high and wide, with precious stones adorned on the foundation walls. God's throne will be at the top, listening to the reign of Jesus Christ throughout eternity. No. Mm -hmm. Eternity. God will dwell with man and wipe away everything. All right. Denise, number four, explain the following word. The Hebrew word sheol. Sheol refers to the world of the dead, the grave or the pit. Sheol has been the meaning of the New Earth being made in dark. Meaning it has been made from the earth in dark for the wicked. Hades. Hades refers to the state of death or both the righteous. It is also a place of punishment for the wicked. Hades is the name of the deep bath of the Hades. Yeah. Yeah. Refers to have a place of eternal torment and punishment. A bit of this means without bottom and is referring to a bottomless pit. Right. Um, Lisa, number five, as a believer, you have been raised with Christ and seated with him in heavenly places. What are the spiritual blessings that are given to every believer in heaven? Chosen, predestined, adopted, given rights and privileges, redemption, grace, and forgiveness of sin. Right. Very good. Uh, number six, Tammy, the Jews divided the heavens into three parts. Name these. The first heaven is atmosphere, the second heaven is firmament, and the third heaven of heaven. Doctrine of Heaven and Hell. I just want to remind you guys core values. I think that we are uh, intent on instilling in every student in the Rock School of the Bible a love for God, a loyalty to the church, a passion for souls, development of godly character and raising up a new generation of leaders. When we talk about heaven and hell uh, and the doctrine of heaven and hell, uh, that middle core value of passion for souls is on my mind. I'm talking about that because uh, uh, heaven and hell are real places where uh, people are really going to go to. And, uh, and so uh, you know, there's a Heaven gain and a hell to shun, and uh, we've got to 
outside the ministry and their mission of uh, getting people uh, out of one and into the other. Uh, let's talk about uh, heaven in the Bible just briefly. I think this, I, I really like this this book, or this course, this chapter. I think he, Dr. Lee did a really nice job of of uh, teaching us a, a lot of uh, a lot of things. You know, the kind of comprehensive uh, 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 topics on these subjects uh, in, in a single chapter there. But uh, heaven in the Bible. Uh, means in some context the sky or the atmosphere, like in Psalm 19.1, the heavens declare the glory of God, um, and he gives other references as well. It also can uh, refer to God's dwelling place, where God is. Uh, Matthew 6.9, Jesus teaching us to, to pray our Father, which are in heaven, uh, the place where God is. Uh, it can also refer to the kingdom of heaven, or the place where God rules, and that is, uh, so the kingdom of heaven, Jesus says, is among you. Yeah, or another translation says the kingdom of heaven is within you. So in the case of the kingdom of heaven, it's not at, at this time a, uh, a, a piece of real estate, okay? But it is the, the dominion of God where God is, is ruling, which is he is ruling over those who confess Jesus is Lord, okay? Um, there is coming a time uh, when... Jesus will reign on the earth for 1,000 years, and uh, the, it'll be 1,000 years of perfect government, perfect institutions, okay? So say all of uh, uh, what you might call the uh, social gospel, all of socialism, um, uh, progressivism, this all teaches that hey, the problem in the world is not man's evil heart. The problem in the world is we have bad institutions. If we could straighten those out, then we'd have a just society. We'd have good society and all that. But we know from reading the book of Revelation that, that there's going to come a time when we're going to have total social justice, right? We're going to have total perfect institutions. There's going to be nothing corrupt about the institutions, about, about government, about religion, Jesus will rule in perfect justice for 1,000 years. And so then at the end of that 1,000 years, uh, do you know what happens? Anybody read ahead, not in this book, but in, the, in your Bible? At the end of that 1,000 years, now the reason that that's able to happen is because the Satan has been bound up for that 1,000 years, okay, and he is out of the picture. At the end of the thousand years, Satan is released. He goes out and deceives the nations, and they all the all the nations come against. After a thousand years of perfect justice, peace, good government, they come back and rebel against Jesus, and this leads to the final conflict. Okay. And so, uh, just uh, you know, there's a whole spate of philosophies very popular. Uh, in our in our world, especially if you you know attend the university or something, you you will get this that you know man is basically good. Man's not the problem. Okay, the institutions are the problem, and uh, and so if you see it, you see people. Uh, you'll know if you're talking to somebody like this if they hold this worldview because uh, they their norm or their tendency will be when. Uh, trying to make the world a better place, um, that their uh, approach to making the world a better place is to fix everybody else, fix all the institutions, to tell you what's, what's wrong with and what ought to be. We know you want to make the world a better place? C fix yourself. That is, submit yourself to God and let the Holy Spirit work to, to change you, transform you, be conformed to the image of Christ. That's our that's our, our destiny, and we know. Hey, we're falling short of this, but God has a a, a plan for our life, and, and the Holy Spirit is working in me to sanctify me, to make me uh, more like Him, uh, so that I can. Uh, what I'm shooting for is to be perfect, even if my Father in Heaven is is perfect, um, not to make everybody else and everything else perfect. Um, the that also leads to. That worldview also leads to um, uh, discontent, right? Because this, 
uh, we look at the world, we say, hey, you know what? Sin has cursed this world. Th this world it, it lies under the, uh, the influence of the God of this world, right? And uh, he, it, Satan is uh, deceiving people. Uh, people's uh, sin is leading to uh, wars, you know, James says, where do uh, wars come from among you? Is it not from your lust with which which war in you? And uh, he says, you, you, you want things and you you uh, you covet them, and uh, you are you 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 fight, you're bitter, you complain, but you have not because you ask not. Uh, and when you ask, you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. That's a good little snapshot of our condition, mankind. Okay. And uh, and so we look at that world and we say, uh, if we see something, say we see a, a family where uh, you know husband and wife are, are together and, uh, and and they love one another and they're raising their children to be godly people. We look at that and we say, wow, that is amazing because you know look how messed up this world is. Isn't it isn't it beautiful when you see something good uh, good happening? Um, or maybe you see a business that's uh, employing people and it's, it's, it's growing and it's providing uh, you know, goods and services that people gladly part with their money in order to get them. We say, wow, that, that's great. Somebody who is looking at the, the, the world from this, uh, this perspective that the problem in the world is corrupt institutions, if they can find uh, one thing wrong in the family. Yeah, but there's other families that aren't together. So so therefore I can't be, I can never be uh, grateful to, for, for the good things going on in life. Uh, you know, yeah, sure, maybe uh, uh, maybe we have, um, uh, you know, that's a, a business that provides jobs, but, but, but people that are working there uh, can't afford, uh, you know, to, to pay their their mortgage on their house or something like that. And so I can't be con content or I can't be, I can't celebrate the, the good things that are going on. So I, I say that that comes from a whole, uh, a whole world view about, uh, about life. And uh, uh, I was talking about the kingdom of heaven where God ha has the rule and we should understand that if we have problems in the world, the problem is sin. The, the problem is that we're not walking with God. I mean, I may be, or you may be walking with God today, but as a, as a human race, we're not, we're not in sync with God. One day, when Jesus returns to rule with a rod of iron, everything will go, every, all the institutions will be right. And when that's over, man's heart will still be corrupt and full of sin so that he rebels against God, kind of demonstrating once and for all that the problem wasn't the world around us, and the problem wasn't God, the problem was us, sin, in man's heart. So uh, just a little side note there about the kingdom of heaven is where God rules. Um, the... Dr. Leon talks about, the Bible teaches there are three heavens or three levels. I think that the first heaven being the sky and what the, how the Bible refers to heaven. The sky uh, in Isaiah 55 uh, is one example. As the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns out there too until it uh, waters the earth and causes it to uh, bring forth in bud, uh, the, uh, the heaven refers to the sky. It's where the rain and snow comes from, right? Uh, the second heaven would be what we call space, all right, where the, where, or sometimes in the Bible, firmament, where the sun and the moon and all the, the stars are located. Uh, Jeremiah 8, 2, it's talking about how uh, uh, they will exhume the body, the bones of the, of the kings and spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven that the people of Judah had uh, gone to worshiping and, and unfaithfulness to God. But in that he refers to uh, the, the host of heaven, that is all of the, the objects that are in heaven, the, the sun, the stars, and all that. So, so space is that second heaven. The third heaven 
is the place where God dwells. Um, it's Stephen uh, in Acts 7.55, uh, it talks about it and says, being full of the Holy Ghost, he looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. So heaven being a place where uh, where God dwells. Uh, that third uh, heaven uh, phrase is used by Paul in 2 Corinthians 12. He's talking about uh, his experience where he was, whether in the body or out of the body, he's not sure, but he was taken up to the third heaven where he uh, heard things that couldn't, uh, that couldn't be spoken uh, on earth. And uh, uh, that was the place where, where God is at. So those are different ways that the Bible, when the Bible says heaven, these are the things that it is talking about. Maybe, you know, one of these or other. I think it helps to, to understand uh, which heaven, in the context, describes in most cases or explains in most cases what we're talking about there. All right. Get this back. Another uh, uh, word that's used is paradise. Okay, so uh, when in that passage where Paul is talking about being caught up into the third heaven, he says, I was caught up into the third heaven, into paradise, and I heard unspeakable words. Uh, the, uh, the place of happiness and pleasure, right? Blessing uh, the, the highest uh, level in heaven. Jesus says to this thief on the cross who says, uh, you know, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he says, I'm telling you the truth. Today, you'll be with me in paradise. Uh, and, and that may be, paradise may be the thing that uh, non-Christian people and other religions too think of when they think of, of heaven. You know, like, okay, so maybe most uh, uh, well-known, I can say famous, maybe infamous to us is uh you know, the uh, Muslims believing, you know, that if they uh, kill an infidel, if they die in, you know, killing an infidel, that they're going to go to paradise where they're going to have 77 virgins, you know. And, and uh, that picture of, of paradise is maybe kind of a uh, popular idea. Uh, I don't know if, uh, you know, like non-religious uh, people who think of heaven uh, think of the 77 virgins angle, but they think it's going to be a place of pleasure and, and joy and happiness and so on like that. And there's an element of truth, not to the not to the 77 virgins thing, but to the fact that it is a place of joy, a place of blessing, a place of pleasure. And you got to be careful uh, not to be uh, have any sentence fragments that can be taken out of context there. Uh, heavenly places, it was, it was in one of the questions, talk about that. So that's our, uh, it's a place where Christ is but a place where we, while we're on the earth here, are uh, positionally that, that we're there, we're identified with him. I don't know how you think about this, but maybe like uh, if you've ever had maybe ladies of your husband's way out on a, a business trip or something like that, and, and he calls home and you bring the kids, you know, around the, the, the phone, hey, put it on speaker and, and talk to dad, you know, he's not there with you, but he's there with you, you know, in that. that's not exactly how it is, but... Uh, just to give an idea. So we are uh, in position with with Christ in the heavenly places. Um, the new heaven. So Peter in Second Peter uh, three, he talks about how we look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, um, because the old heavens, this one, the old earth and the old heavens, the ones that are there now, are going to be. Uh, destroyed. I don't. I don't know if it doesn't seem uh, that would be the case, uh, but uh, I don't think that the place where God dwells, the third heaven, is what it's talking about there. But rather the heavens, the sky, um, possibly space, that, that part, uh, and the and the earth are what is going to be uh, burned up and and destroyed and made new. Um, but uh, God is going to make the, the whole thing new. It's, uh, 
that is the like the uh, apotheosis or the, the the culmination of of God's plan when it says that you know uh, uh, before creation you know uh, the Jesus you know slain uh, before the foundation of the world uh, the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world why slain because he's going to redeem us from our sins pay for our sins well that hadn't happened yet but in God's eternity perspective where there's no He's not inside of time like we are. Okay, so he sees it, it all uh, from what we would call the beginning to the end. And, uh, and so he created a perfect world. God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, dot, dot, dot. Uh, and God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Okay, and then through uh, one man's sin, death, entered the world, right? And the creation was subjected to futility. And, and so we have a cursed world that we're in now, and God's been working his plan over now thousands of years to redeem it. And uh, eventually that's going to mean, in the case of believers, new bodies, right? And in the case of this, this earth, that new bodies, the revelation of the sons of God and this earth, that it would be made new. And the heavens, I believe he's referring to like the skies and the maybe maybe even in space, will be made new. And uh, Peter says there in that passage, the elements will dissolve with a fervent heat. Okay? And so God's going to like uh, put it back all back on the potter's wheel and, and do it again a place where righteousness dwells. Uh, in, uh, in that new earth and new heaven, I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. And uh, so that is the place that we talk about uh, Christians you know, dying and going to heaven. That is what happens. But heaven isn't the final stop, not the final destination. Rather, the new earth and new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven, is the is the final destination. And so, if somebody says, you know, hey, you know, pray this prayer, and uh, when you die, you'll go to heaven and be with Jesus there forever. That's not quite right. You know, you'll die and go to heaven, and be with Jesus forever, but you're going to uh, be in heaven until the heavens and the earth are made new and restored to God's original plan. Then on to hell. The Bible talks about hell a lot. And uh, hell is a real place. In the Old Covenant, the Hebrew word sheol, the place of the dead or the world of the dead. Uh, David uh, says, uh, Psalm 16, You shall not leave my soul in sheol, in the place of the dead, nor allow your Holy One to see corruption. Uh, in the New Testament, in Greek, uh, the word Hades also refers to the place of the dead. And uh, it actually uh, is, was a place of the, the dead for both the wicked and the righteous. And we see that in a story that Jesus told. Some people say the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. But Jesus doesn't say it. Like, I was looking through the book of Luke. And say. almost every time it says that he spoke a parable, that Jesus told him a parable and said, or hear the parable of the... In this case, he just says... Uh, there was a rich man, and there was a beggar. And uh, interesting, the, he says the same thing about the prodigal son. He says there was a man that had two sons. So it's possible that that was just something that happened, you know, that, that, that he knew about. But uh, the, uh, the wicked were there in Hades. It says the, the rich man looking... Uh, uh, up from uh, hell, Hades is the word in, uh, that's translated there. Um, so the wicked are in Hades, but across a great gulf in Abraham's bosom the, is Lazarus, who's being comforted. Okay, and uh, but now, and your uh, the questions. Uh, touched this a little bit, that place that was uh, 
where the uh, where the the righteous work has been emptied out. Okay, and if you know in Colossians uh, chapter two, where it says that uh, Jesus uh, spoiled principalities and powers. In Ephesians 4, where it says he led captivity captive. Um, so I I believe what that's referring to is all those saints, all those righteous, right? Back from you know Abel and Noah and Moses, all those guys that were there being comforted in Abraham's bosom until the way was made into God's dwelling place, heaven, uh, until a way was made for them. And Jesus came and, and cleared that place out. So it's probably just like tumbleweed blowing through that part of Hades right now. One shudder, you know, flapping in the wind. Um, then another Greek word in the New Testament, it's just used this one time in Second Peter 4, Tartarus, or Tartarus, um, is uh, something you can uh, dip your fish in. It's very good. <laughs> Tartar sauce. Uh, Tartarus, uh, Peter says uh, that the angels uh, who left their first estate and, and sin are, gonna, are, are confined there in, awaiting cha in chains of darkness awaiting judgment. Uh, Jude talks about the same thing, like he was listening to Peter's uh, tape series or something. And uh, it's the deepest part of, of Hades, you know. And people say sometimes if there is a you know especially hot uh, place in hell, you know this kind of person belongs there. You know? Well, actually, I don't know if it's especially hot, but it's especially deep anyway. Uh, place where these uh, uh, fallen uh, angels. Not important for this lesson which angels he's talking about, but uh, some angels who left their first estate are being confined in chains until their judgment, Tartarus. And then another one, Jesus uses this among others, is Gehenna, uh, which uh, is uh, uh, the Valley of the Son of Hinnom, or Hinnom, it's a kind of shorthand for the Valley of the Son of Hinnom. And uh, this place of unquenchable fire uh, was a uh, landfill, you know, a garbage dump where they burned the, the garbage outside of, in, in Israel uh, at that time. And uh, but this place, uh, the Valley of the Son of Hinnom, is where the the uh, uh, Israelites in the time of the prophets were following the this uh, you know worship of Molech and sacrificing their own children in the fire. You can imagine how depraved that was, um, sacrificing their own children in the fire, which is how the pagans around them worship Molech. And uh, so the, that phrase, that term, Gehenna, is actually used quite a few times in, in the New Testament. And uh, Jesus used it to, to refer to hell, a place of unquenchable fire. Mark 9 actually uses that term in there, where their, their worm dies not and their, and their fire is not quenched. And then the last one is the abyss. Revelation 22 and 3 uh, talks about the bottomless pit a place of confinement and a destruction. There's an angel of the abyss named Apollyon, which means a destroyer. So uh, you don't want to go there. It's not a good place. It's a place where uh, Satan is thrown into the bottomless pit and chained there uh, during a thousand year uh, earthly reign of Christ. Heaven's a real place place where God dwells and where believe, believers go to be in paradise with Jesus after they die. And until the final settlement in the new earth and the new Jerusalem are established, a place where righteousness dwells. Um, in the book, it mentions the, from the book of Revelation, we know that this, um, air, um, the volume, if you will, of the new Jerusalem is 1,500 miles uh, wide by 1,500 miles long by 1,500 miles high. So I think there's probably a mountain or a very big high-rise building. Uh, but uh, the uh, I, I calculated that is uh, 3.375 billion 
cubic miles of space. It just that, that sounds like a lot. It is a lot because uh, by comparison, the Earth has I, I don't know you know I didn't figure 1,500 miles high, but but in square miles, the Earth has a little bit less than 200 million square miles. Okay, so this is a huge, huge space, and it would have to be because you have a lot of people. But it's you know. I don't know if, uh, you know, the floor, is there a 13th floor? That's a question, you know, to ask. But uh, first question I'm going to ask when I get to heaven. Um, but uh, the, uh, you know, I guess, the, you know, multi-level uh, living there. And uh, the uh, the space is, is massive. Because you think, well, how could all those people fit in one city? You know, all the people of all time, whatever, because it's a really big city, you know. And, by the way, it'll be closed off after that, you know, and uh, so there's uh, there's no uh, additional uh, people there. Uh, hell is also a real place where unbelievers will go to be in torment when they die, as will the devil and his angels, as he was prepared for. Um, God is not willing that any should perish, but uh, that all should come to repentance. And so... Uh, uh, I'll tell you guys the truth. As I was preparing the lesson, I was thinking about using uh, just for um, the memory hooks uh, some Far Side cartoons because he's done a lot of heaven and hell uh, cartoons. And the Far Side, I don't know if you're familiar with Gary Larson's Far Side comic, but uh, they thought about it. Like, you know what? Um, they're very clever, but this isn't really a laughing matter. It's not. It's not really a subject. Uh, of joking because heaven is real and and God wants people there and hell is real and God does not want people there and yet Jesus told us broad is the path right and, and broad is the way wide is the path uh, wide is the door that leads to destruction and many there be that go there therein but narrow is the path and and straight the gate that leads to life, and few there be to find it. And so we we want we got to realize, hey, all around us are people that are headed for real hell, and uh, we have uh, the treasure, the good news of the gospel that they could be headed for real heaven. And so uh, a little reality check for us: those are real, real things, heaven and hell. Um, Colossians three says. Uh, Set your uh, affections on things above, not on where Christ sits, not on things on the earth. Um, we live in the material world, right? I mean, we walk around in the material world, and uh, we live in a very materialistic culture, meaning that this our culture assesses what you see, smell, taste, touch, hear, to be the finality of reality. Okay? But that's not true. Okay? In fact, the things which are seen were made by things which are unseen. And so the unseen things are, you'd say, more real than the things you see. More real because all of this is going to burn. Right? It's all passing away. Uh, but heaven and hell are real, and they're going to be there long after this is gone. So uh, that's our that's our reality check. Uh, Lord, pre uh, please uh, move our hearts. Lord, uh, teach us, Holy Spirit, and uh, uh, instill in us a consciousness of the reality of heaven and hell. And move our hearts, uh, Lord, to, to obedience, to a passion, to a uh, motivation, to, uh, to, to walk in the ministry of reconciliation and appeal to people, be reconciled to God. Thank you, Jesus, for opening the way uh, that we can be made righteous and be with you for all eternity, that nobody has to go to, to hell. And uh, Lord, I pray you would find us faithful in uh, spreading the good news and rescuing people out of that destruction. In Jesus' name, amen. All right.
on the homework uh, for next week is uh, the Doctrine of Judgments. And so I'm going to just uh, grab that and say just the Doctrine of Judgments, uh, Chapter 11, uh, for next week. And then let's take five, unless you have questions. I should have said that. If anybody have questions about heaven and hell, yeah. And I go to bed. <laughs> what if somebody gets sick? Okay. Uh, let's take five.